my book is this I do women, children, and the kids. And the depression. <coughs> my one is women are state plus tried on the opportunity. So I I will present my Mama Omo Turataman. Turataman was born in Ethiopia in 1901. She was they 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 come down in Tonga. It was Tonga before, but now it's Eastern Cape. So she's the seven children in the family. She is by her father, not my. She she likes to plow, plant vegetables. She likes to eat and cook fresh vegetables. And she was not very educated. She was She was not a politician at that time. She was a And her father died in 1920 when there was a bulwark in Sadio Massacre. She, oh, her father and two uncles. So in 1924, she married Udo Ujo Tamar. And they have four children. Three of them died with a starvation, meningitis, and tuberculosis at that time. So they moved to Cape Town to stay at the streets. <laughs> but they, <laughs> she will have another four children. <laughs> and she take a wife of her sister's child to stay with them. And she looked awake and she was a domestic worker. So, it, well, here yeah, it, it, it this is this. But they moved to Blow Fail, Blow Flay at Retreat. She was one of the women who built a shack or to start the informal settlement there at Retreat. And then there are many followers of them. They, 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 they built the houses there. And then her husband was a problem. She was a alcoholic, and she likes women. She have, he have a lot of women, and Dora love him very much. She has a problem with that, and her husband left her when she was there. But she was not sit down and do nothing. Okay, the, the government of apartheid at that time, she organized, she, she, uh, the, uh, the government said that that place was for the colored only, and then the black people moved to Kalanga, Nyanga, and they didn't want to, to move to that place just like us at our section. Mm. Didn't want to move there. Me, I don't want to move. <laughs> I like that place. And her, uh, her uncle was a lawyer. He assisted them to organize a meeting. The community members was 55 who were attending that meeting. And they tried to mobilize something, not to go without a fight. So when, when she was attending that meeting, the part, the part of South Africa was he was the members of Kunzberg of South Africa. Mm -hmm. Was they they elected her? They saw that she is a deputy one, and she was recognized at that time. They uh, elected her as a okay. And then at that meeting, she was okay. She was an ANC member after that. And then they okay. He she worked with women, and she started to beat. She started the crutches, and she was the first woman to start the crutches. She was the first woman to, to build a house, and she was the first organizer of the events of the women of South Africa. So she was a strong person, she was an organizer, she was the mother, she was an activist, uh, just like other women. I included. Yes. <laughs> so, 
and then she or then the government or Palayo demolished their houses and they moved they forced them to move to Walanga. And mm -hmm. then she stays there at Walanga. After she stays at Walanga, she organized a swing. And she saw a burn by blankets. Mm -hmm. And she was organized a lot of women just not to sit down and do nothing. They make the blankets and clothes and so sell it to the town. So after that, she okay, and then she was an organizer of all. She lectured. No, oh, she was an organizer of the national of the national women's federation. Yeah, the women's march, nineteen fifty-six. She was an organizer, nineteen fifty-three. She organized and. She worked with other women, so they didn't go here, or so soon, they worked with her. So they mobilized that anti-pass campaign. Mm -hmm. And then after that, she, the government was, okay, she elected to go to the World Matters the conference at, at London. Mm -hmm. After she came back, the the government, the Minister of Justice, who BJ Foster, banned her, banned her for five years not to attend any meetings, any gatherings. She must go alone and she must go not at that. And then one day, she, the, the police uh, arrest her. And there was a first, there was, the, there, was a, there was a woman trying to stop that, not to arrest, not the police to arrest. She said, I. I'm not have, I not have a pass in my pocket. If you arrest her, you can arrest us. They are this around they are around the, the, the police van and the police wow. open the, the police van the, that is Yeah. So she after that she was opened the conference. Oh she was sick after her husband. She did him. She was very sick, and she had a um, problem with her eyes. She she was not see. She opened the conference and sat in a wheelchair. And can I quote her? I can't. Okay. I got that. Okay. Oh. We must share the problems so that we can solve them together. We must free ourselves. Men and women must share housework. Must work together in the in the, in the home and out in the world. Women must unite to fight for rights. We have opened the way for you. We must go forward. That is why we do that. I can't... I can't sit down and do nothing when the government is abusing our rights or violating our rights. Thanks. And he died in eight years. Uh, we also, in the same group, as we uh, arranged ourselves, uh, was blocking the, the women's charter uh, where, it, uh, where they, they, they adopt uh, the women's charter. They adopt the women's charter in, in 17 April 1954 uh, in a lot of uh, FAUSA. Um, my, my, my focus was not only on, on the women's charter, but I look at uh, the, the struggle that, that lead to 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 women's charter what what happened uh that uh the, 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 the had that discussion to to have women's charter uh, as early as uh 1920s uh before they, they went to to draw back to looking for for work uh there was abusive uh in household whereby uh men uh the house of household whereby um there's a lot of, abu of, of, of abusive. Uh, then you, you go um, 
as as as, as they, they they go to to look for work for their kids, uh, whereby they struggle to 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 have their husband. Uh, since there was a lot of laws whereby women cannot uh, live in, 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 in with their with their with their husband, they cannot live with their uh, kids. Uh, that lead together with with the grievance that they have to to, to have a uh, uh, women's shelter. Um, also, the evaluation of, of, of women whereby women don't get uh, edu education as same as as as, as men. They don't have a right to vote. They don't have a right to to, to have a housing. Uh, uh, they don't have a right even to to, to vote. If in, in, if you go to 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 Eastern Cape, whereby if a, a woman is a widow, uh, somebody in the in the family must come and, and stand for on behalf of a woman. These things came together with the apartheid system and African system that our culture that we have uh, put together. To, to women's charter, I can um, I, I, I can just read uh, three things about the aims that 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 were were there on, on, on women's charter. Why why they, they, they want this women's charter? Uh, one, the right to vote, as I, I, I mentioned, and to be elected as a vote in the state. Um, the right uh, of full opportunity, or uh, employment, equal uh, payment, uh, possibility of promotion in all sphere of work. Um, uh, for the develop for the development uh, of every child through uh, free compulsory ed education for all, uh, for the protection of mother and child through uh, maternity homes, we welfare clinics, creche, mm, uh, and uh, nurses schools. Uh, these are the things that that lead uh, that today we we have uh, op or, or the history of Lidengui, Dora Taman. Uh, uh, so we have uh, history of, of uh, as, uh, the, the Mamkazo have their own history, but we still need to write their own their own history. It's because of 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 of, of, of women's charter. The, the women stood themselves. I think my, my fellow comrade will will illustrate uh, more about the struggle of 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 of, of, of women. The resistance. I didn't want to to take his part. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I will carry on from Fiso. Um, my part was around women oppression under apartheid. So what I've, I've done, there was an approach which is the government used in terms of oppressing women. So I will read some few lines. Apartheid government was committed to work according to its law and principle, treating black women as inferior, using the power of law to deprive black women access to township and city which is, this was a system designed to deprive them to come in city. They must stay there in real areas. Um, women were used as useful aliens. For instance, they were deprived right to work unless their labor was, was wanted. So it was a system. Also, um, for example, past laws was a symbol of non-white, lack of freedom, of movement, meaning, um, they were given a pass, and the pass laws were firstly introduced for women in Profundi in 1913. So like, if you are non-white, you have to carry a pass. If you don't have a pass, you don't have the access to walk around in town, so you'll be deprived. So around, around uh, for example, for most parts, women were separated, facing similar oppression with men, but for women, it was more because they were discriminated because of their color, they were discriminated because of their gender. Mm -hmm. So the elements which is the apartheid system used in order to oppress women, there was a force which is the government used, employing the police to use force. Um, there was a brutality against women, there was imprisonment against women, there was a torture, there was a humiliation as well as racial and gender discrimination. So meaning um, victims, there were victims during this process, meaning women were victims as well as their children. Because if, if your mother doesn't come to work, then you will be a victim because you, you won't have means to survive. So in those parts, government was well organized. 
because he or she bang is she, he have a, 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 a apartheid laws, which is, for example, there was a Native Land Act 27 of 1913, which is depriving black to have access to land and other part. And there was a Restriction Act 30 of 1950, also a depriving women. Also, there was a Group Areas Act 41 of 1950. As well as there was a Native Laws Amendment Act 54 of 1952. Um, there was a General Law Amendment Act of 37, Act 37 of 1965, which is it was a 90 days detention, meaning you, you will be detained for 90 days without lawyer in a solitary confinement, and it was a torture because you, you, you don't have a place to talk with people, you only talk to yourself, and psychologically it was affecting people mentally. And some some people who can get up like psychologically mad or something it happen. So the other part which is uh, I've looked for there was a issue of prostitution. For example, for some women who are single, who are economically vulnerable, um, they were using um, transnational sex to to make means of money. Meaning um, around that part, some women also deprived to 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 make access and in, in, in to make use of their means to make money to feed their their children and they they closed down squatter camps and informal settlement around main town facing women either back to their rural areas in the town and the towns which is for example in Cape Town um, maybe they will say like it's only men who are allowed here. If they see you as a woman, then the police will come and take you out and send you through metal rain back to Eastern Cape. Then it was also a violent against women. Also, women they were deprived possibility of bringing up their own children in town, which it was also a violent against women. If like you have access, but you are deprived to bring your own children in town, so. Also, there was a restriction, a street one, in 1913. Um, Bloemfontein municipality authorized institutions that pass law for women when necessary to combat illegal burying and prostitution. Meaning, women, since like they were not working, they decided, no, we, we can do something for ourselves. Let's sell liquor. Mm -hmm. But the government saw these women are making means. So they said, no, you are not allowed to, to sell liquor. Which is it was a it was a it was also an oppression to women. Um, the other restriction to women, the everyday life live for women in in Woodwork. I'm not sure the which place is it, but were tightly restricted. <coughs> for example, there was a permit imposed for a local for a locality whereby if you are under sixteen you also have to pay a pass, and that pass you have to buy it monthly, and you use it the amount of 10 shillings, and each and every month you have to, to pay that pass. So there were a resistance around women, so I will just like highlight some codes which is were more powerful to keep the women struggle. For example, uh, there was a code from Florence Mkiza saying, I stand unafraid, I stand Define. I stand sorry for government, its supporters and puppets. Meaning, like, she was trying to to voice up for women. And there is another one saying, like, there is no power on earth can prevent the mothers of South Africa and of the world from achieving justice for their children. If women are well organized together with men on the march to freedom. Um, there's a last one, which is it's a famous one. Watinda Bafas, Watindi Mbobod. So, all the information is mostly found on South African history, online, and you can go to the Beth African Art Gallery, you can find some pictures, also about .com African history. The other one, you can, there is a women's struggle in 20th century, there's a South African book, and you can find it up at the legislation South Africa timeline, goodbye, and the segregation history.
timeline. So, thank you. We started asking ourselves why it was called Rivonia Shire. Um, and we saw online when we searched that it was because of the location where the ANC members um, and some of their Jews in the Rivonia Shire were hiding. So, it was a hideout for some ANC cadres. Um, so there's, we have, I was happy to say about that, the late Nelson Kholitlatha Mandela, you know. Why does he get the picture and the others don't? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Nelson Mandela, Walter Sassoul, and Tatu Kovun mm. Um So he was born in the school in the East Indian um, That is a child who used to be Sky um, in 1918. Um, he had a BA degree, um, he was a lawyer, um, he studied at Fort Hill University. Um, he was involved in the M plan, which was allegedly called Mandela Plan. Um, he was the leader in the defiance campaign. Um, he was one of the band activists. Um, yeah, so he was banned, he was one of the amongst the band activists um, because of his influence. Um, and, and their endeavors in trying to challenge the apartheid government. Uh, okay, um, he's called um, this, besides I am prepared to die for, um, he mentioned in the talk and said, in this, I quote, the invincibility of our case, of our cause, and the certainty of our final victory are the impenetra impenetrable armor of those who consistently uphold their faith um, in freedom and justice in spite of political persecution. Um, so he was trying to outline that um, the reason why they're still um, carrying on is because of the people that were supporting them and being behind the meeting when they were um, arrested. Well, Tassisul was born in Angol, in Transkai. Um, he was not that educated. He was amongst those who were influenced um, in terms of education. Um, so he is one of the self-educated people. Um, he was the former mine, he used to work in mines. He used to be a kitchen boy um, and also a baker's boy. He joined the ANC in 1940. Um, he led the campaign to defy unjust laws in 1952. His wife, Adetina Sassoon, was, was the nurse. Um, and Albertina led the Women's League. He, um, and Sisulu, um, um, he was asked, um, I don't recall well the question, um, what was the question that he was asked in the talk. But then he replied and said, I could no, that's a different matter altogether. Would you grudge a man his defense? So that was one of the things that stood out for me in the trial that we mentioned. Um, Ukovun Beki, um, I think it's his wife in the, in, tri in the Eastern Cape that is not well now. It was reported in the news that she is not well, Mama Big. Um, she has been well um, helping other women in Transkai um, in terms of getting jobs and providing jobs for themselves. I was born in Transkai in 1912. Um, uh, he was he started in the mission school. Um, he was the secretary of the ANC from 19, ANC Youth League when he joined in 1943. Um, he used to work in the commercial and in industrial work. Um, oh, he was the secretary of the ANC and supported um, the um, Clement Katagi, um, who was in the commercial and industrial workers. So. Nice. Yes, yeah. Um, he started working when he was 14 years old because of property coming in the Eastern And I see it was exactly the same thing that you had last week, or two weeks ago. Exactly the same, with the same spelling mistake. <laughs> <laughs> um, my key will be uh, As we know that uh, this year, South African uh, commemorated the 50 year anniversary uh, of what is known as the Rivonia Trial uh, on, on the 11th of July uh, in 1963. 16 leaders 
uh, of the African National Congress were arrested and charged with the sabotage of the regime. Uh, amongst them was Nelson Mandela, who was sentenced to life in prison, and Dennis Goldberg and the other accused. I've done a little bit of biography uh, about Dennis Viot Goldberg, which was one of the accused in the prison. Uh, Dennis Goldberg uh, was born in South Africa, uh, here in Cape Town, Western Cape, in the 11th of April, 1933. His political involvement uh, was a leading member of the, democrat the, the, the Democratic political activist. He was also sentenced with Mandela and others in the Rivonia tribe. Uh, he was married in, he was married to Ernestine Bonstein, who was born in Johannesburg on the 19th, on the, on the 9th of April 1954. Uh, she was also a uh, an activist, a uh, political activist. Uh, she was detained 90 days uh, in, a, a, in the restriction of law uh, in 1963 after Goldberg was also arrested on the treason trial. Uh, working, his working history, Goldberg, uh, he was appointed uh, in 2002 as an advisor of Ronnie Carson's. Uh, and he was a Minister of Water and Affairs and the Forestry until 2004. Uh, the other accused in the treason trial was Elias Mutualedi, uh, born in Skukune uh, in 1926, July, no, in 1924, July 26. Uh, he was late, uh, died in 9th May 1994 after we just uh, got our democracy. He was a clerk uh, and a convincer. Uh, his political involvement, he joined in 1948 uh, ANC until he, reminded the mem he remained the member until 1954, where in the prison, in the prison trial, he said that although I'm listed communist, I did not join communists after he had, it has, he had been banned. He also admitted that he was a technical committee in the Johannesburg regime and it was recruited uh, to MK during the end of 1962. Uh, his family he was married, he was a married man having seven children, having seven small children. His wife was also detained in the apartheid era, 90 days. Uh, he died after the democracy, as I said before. He, the other accused was Andrew Maggetti Mlangeni, born in Soweto uh, in 1925, in the 6th of June. Uh, educated, uh, uh, educated in Soweto. He started his education uh, when he was 10 years. Uh, he dropped out because of financial problems. Uh, because he went to assist uh, working as a candy in Johannesburg golf course. Uh, his political involvement in the ANC uh, started in 1951 when he joined uh, the Youth League. Uh, after 1954, he joined the ANC, the bigger one. Uh, during the Congress of the People, he was a branch delegate in Clip Town when they formulated the Freedom Charter. Uh, from 1958 to 1960, he was the ANC steward, amongst the first to be sent in military training of the country. Uh, he was also married man. Uh, he was the ninth from his family after his father passed away in 1936. Shortly after his mother given to, uh, his, after his mother given birth to two twins. 
Uh, the last uh, I choose that I will be presenting about is uh, Mohammed uh, Katrida, uh, known as Katie, his nickname. He was also born in 1929, in the 21st August, uh, in here in the Western Transvaal, uh, known as Western Transvaal. Uh, he educated, he, he attended uh, in Johannesburg Indian High School. Uh, he, he also came to, he was influenced in the politics by Dr. Yosef Nadu Dando, uh, yeah, Dando, yeah, Dando. Uh, and his uh, colored brother uh, to come to with the politics. He was involved in a politics uh, since 1941 at the age of 12 uh, when he joined the Youth Communist League of South Africa. He was distributing uh, leaflets at the street corner of Illegal. During the World War I, uh, he was also involved in an anti-war campaign. World War II. Uh, in, in the anti-war campaign, the non-European front. Uh, his involvement uh, in the ANC, he met leaders like uh, Walter Sisulu in 1940, and Nelson Mandela. Uh, I'll be presenting. Sorry. You part of the team are lawyers, huh? <laughs> yes. I'll be presenting about Arthur Charles Carlson. But first, we're just going to look at his biography then we'll take a little bit more on what he has done, what he has achieved. Arthur Chastasin was the president of the Constitutional Court, and he was part of the defense team in the Bonilla trial. Mm -hmm. uh, he was in office from November 2001 until June 2005. Uh, he was in the time during Tabu Peak as president, and he was succeeded, well, sorry, his deputy, pres deputy was Pius Lang at that time. Mm -hmm. And he was presented by Ishmael Mohammed, who was succeeded by Pius Lam. Uh, Arthur uh, Charles Carlson was born in 24th of November in 1931 in Johannesburg. Uh, he died in, on the 1st of December 2012 at the age of 81. He was married to a beautiful woman called Lorraine Charles Carlson and they had two children. What's their names? I didn't, I didn't <laughs> <know>. <laughs> uh, he studied he studied at the University of the Witwatersrand. Ada Chagasin was one of the cultural court South African South African Ada Chagasin was the president of the Constitutional Court in South Africa from 1994 to 2001 and the Chief Justice of South Africa from 2001 until 2005. He was the member of the defense team in the Revolution trial of 1963. He was born in Johannesburg and was educated at Hilton College and later graduated from the University of the Fitzgerald Range with the BCom in and the two and an LLP come a lot in 1954. As he was part of the defense team of the former president Nelson Mandela in the Devonian trial that saw Mandela sentenced to life imprisonment, Arthur left a very successful legal practice to become a legal human rights lawyer helping to establish the Legal Resource Center. Ata served as the center director from November 1978 until September 1993. In 1975 and 1983, he was leading counsel in the case of the Rikoman and Methodo Tom Ricotto, which successfully challenged the legality of apartheid legislation seeking to establish influx control and crippled government's ability to enforce influx control laws. As the first president of the South Africa's new constitutional court, Chastelson gained a reputation as one of the South Africa's leading jurists in constitutional and human rights issues. Chastelson was in the technical committee on constitutional issues that was appointed by a multi-party negotiating forum in May 1993, acting as a key advisor on the adoption of the interim constitution of South Africa. In 1993, 
nine and three and was regarded as one of the prime movers of changing judiciary in South Africa's in South Africa during his time on the bench of the Constitutional Court. The, the court's first major decision under Chaskasin leadership was the abolishing of death penalty on 6 June 1995. More recently, Chaskasin had also become prominent internationally becoming commissioner of the International Commission of Jurists in 1995 before being selected as one of the South Africa's four members on the United Nations. United Nations Permanent Court of Arbitration in 1999. In 1989, he consulted on the writing constitution of Namibia. He became the president of the International Commission of Jurists from then from 2002 until 2008. In May, in May 31st, 2005, Charles retired as Chief Justice and was replaced by his former deputy. Mr. Pius Lam. In his 2005 State of Nations speech, before we get the speech, I just want to read you his quote. I couldn't fit it there. Uh, former Chief Justice Atash Chakasin, his quote was, I quote, without fear or favor or prejudice, the courts, the constitution, and transformation, I, I, I end, end quote. And then there's a closing remarks on his statement on the revenue trial, but it's too long. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, okay, in his 2005 State of Nations speech, and shortly before Chagasin's retirement, South Africa's President Tabumpi praised the Chief Justice as, I quote, a great son of our people, and I quote, a giant among architect, arch architects of our democracy. They paid tribute to Charles for everything he had done. I quote as a South African, a lawyer, and a judge, to shepherd us towards the con construction of, our, of, of a South African, South African that truly belongs to all who live in it. Presenting on two of the lawyers, one of them being the leader of the team of lawyers, which is Bram which is Abraham Fisher, which is called Bram Fisher, uh, who was born in 1908 and died in, 19, in 1975 at the age of 67 years in Bloemfontein. Uh, <clears throat> Bram was an African. Uh, he was the eldest of five children. Uh, the name Bram, Abraham was given to him because he was the eldest in the grandchildren. That's how his family used to give names. Uh, his father is J.P. JP Fisher, uh, who was the judge president in Orange Free State. And Bram Fisher was a, went to school in Oakland, sorry, he went to school in Rhodes. Then from there, he went to Oxford to study law where he qualified as a lawyer. Then he was involved in his in his lifetime as a lawyer, he was involved in two of the biggest in two of the biggest uh, cases in the history of South Africa. First of all which is prison trial, where he was also a leader in the defense team. In one in where they accused one hundred and twenty six accused, where they won the case. The second case was the Revonia trial. Uh, where he defended the eleven, the, I mean, the Jews in the Rivonia trial. Now he was a member, a committed member of the Communist Party. Uh, he was also arrested uh, in 1964, shortly after the Jews of the Rivonia trial were imprisoned, and he was charged under the Suppression of Communism Act, and he was sentenced to life imprisonment. Now, he, he died in 1975 in his brother's house in Bloemfontein after he was acquitted on parole because he was sick, he died of cancer. Now, his friend, which I'm also presenting on, which is Vernon Berach, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the same name. Berach. Berach, yeah. <laughs> uh, who was, was, was born in 1900. 
uh, he died at the age of 82. He died in 1983 in September. He was also an advocate in the Rivonia trial. Uh, he was also a committed member in the Communist Party also. Uh, his last, I mean Vernon's last political trial was in 1966 where he defended his former colleague and friend, which is Bram Fish. Yeah. Uh, he retired in, he retired and moved to Swaziland. After, shortly after after the case. Now, uh, uh, yeah, that's about it. Short and sweet, straight to the point. Uh, George Bezos, uh, he was uh, born in 1928 in Karina, in Greece. Uh, he came to South Africa after World War II in 1941 as a 13-year-old boy with his father. Uh, as the refugees, <coughs> and then he was uh, he pursued his studies in the vet in vet uh, uh, for for the law. Then he started to work as a lawyer, nineteen fifty four. And <coughs> in the defending team of the Revenue trial, he was representing uh, uh, Walter Sisulu, Nelson Mandela. And, and he, he had uh, done the defendants for many trials, political trials that were happening during that time, because he was part of the a team who was defending or uh, under um, how do you call it the transing trial. Yeah, <coughs> uh, George Bizov uh, had. had uh, um, was the human rights lawyer, and he he is a senior counselor at the legal uh, res legal resource center in the Johannesburg in the constitutional unit, a member of the board of trustees in the central center for the uh, appeal to legal studies at that, and the judge of the court of appeal in Botswana. Uh, are you reading from South African history online? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, so you didn't write your own one? No, I did write my own one, but then there is this one. No, I prefer your own one. <laughs> no, my own one is there. Let's talk to your own one. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> the old one's better. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so, uh, okay, let me just come closer. Okay? I'm taking up the chat of I think this one I have covered. Okay, so, so it's Can you talk about the refugee? Yeah, I did. He was the refugee from Greece, and he came in South Africa uh, uh, in 1941 after the World War II. Uh, he got some honors and awards. The first award was given to him. It was given on the 10th of June, June 1999, by the President Nelson Mandela as the meritorious service class two uh, a medal. And the other one was given on the 5th of April, 2001, an international trial lawyer, a prize. And the other one was the IPA, International Bar Association. And it was given on him in 2004. So, so that was Judge Bezov. No, I, I'm going to, uh, I haven't done yet, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to Dr. Utah. Oh, yes. oh. Yeah. <laughs> no, Percy Utah was the, was born in, in Woodstock. In 19, huh? in, in 1911. We will send him back to you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, no, you don't have to send him back. Yeah. No, no, he, 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 he was the prosecutor in the Revenue Triad. Oh. Mm. And, uh, 
uh, he, 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 he was going to prostitute the, 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 the trial and and he was the he he was against the the uh, the, the what was done by the, these leaders or uh, the great leaders of Kultasa Suru and Nelson Mandela, and he charged them with the sabotage uh, to the regime government, and he, he considered them as the dangerous people that need to be uh, sent to to death penalty. Mm. And I will just read his, his speech after. He have, he have done uh, the case was over because he didn't manage to 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 get them to 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 yeah, penalty yeah. the sentence. But then he managed to give them a sentence, a uh, life to sentence prison. Uh, the, let me just have his phrase here. Okay. At the outset of my argument, I said that is that this case was one of the highest trends in par excellence because of the people who have lost their lives and suffered injuries as, as a result of the activities of the accused it is apparent that this case is now one of the murder and attempted murders as well i make no i make a bold to say that every particular allegations in the uh, indictment has been proved there is no there is not a single material allegation in the opening address that has not been approved. One evidence is, one the evidence it is clear that without a, without action of the police, South Africa might have might found itself in a bloody civil war. The public owns a great debt of gratitude to the police. So he he was really serious in taking the people who were sabotaging the government to penalty punishment. I'm going to present <coughs> Jewel Goodman Jofi. Um he's alive. He's living in leading team in Sweden. Uh, he was born in twelfth May nineteen thirty two. He was He's married a lady called Juanita, and he also got two children. Um, he chose to be a lawyer because they want a black, um, the way the black people treated as a slaver. He decided to defend the people who want to def defend because of their political beliefs. Um, he was educated at the University of Vedvatesrand, uh, having a BCom and LLB in 1955. He was worked as a human rights lawyer in 1958 to, to 1965. In 1963 to 64, he was uh, a defendant, defense, defendant for the Rwanda trial. Uh, he was the one who talked to um, Mandela at the dark pen and at the dark dock, where he begged him not to 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 mention the last line of the the speech. Mm -hmm. I quote: "He prepared to die." Mm -hmm. He was feared that if he can um, talk those lines, the 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 judge sent him life into prison. <coughs> in 1965, um, he, 1955, he wrote a book called Mandela vs. the State. He wrote this book because he, he think Mandela and the, uh, and the other archers were died in prison. So, he read this book because he wanted to remember uh, their uh, the struggle. Yeah. Um, late, he moved uh, to United Kingdom and worked in the financial service industry, setting up a humble life insurance with St. Mark Weinberg as well as voluntary sector. Um, 
1965 also he was getting uh, he was banned to South Africa moved to England and getting an exit permit exit permit uh, when a person gets a permit and not to come back mm. in the country oh he was associated with Ox Oxfam in various roles between 1982 and 2001, including, including being a chair in 1995 to 2001. He was also an early supporter of Technology Trust. In 2006, he was awarded a honorary degree, a Doctor of Law, from the Univ University of Perth. In 1999, awarded the CBE in the in 1999 a new owner and made a life peer in 16 February 2000 being raised to be a, a oh, what to call it yeah. peer yeah, as a baron Jofi uh, yeah. in 2003 he proposed as a private member members bill in the associated dying okay in February 2003, he proposed as a private member's bill, the I quote, assisted dying for the terminated bill, which would legalize phys physician as assistant dying after deliberation by a Lord's committee. The bill was put forward again in November 2005. On 12 May 2006, the bill was debated once again in the House of Lords, an amendment to delay its introduction by six months was carried by a margin of 148 to 100 pages. I 